Hey, welcome to How to Launch Your Podcast in 30 Days. I'm podcast talent coach Eric K. Johnson. Thanks for being here. It's always great to see you. This is where I'm going to help you go through a step-by-step -step process to launch your podcast in 30 days. But let me ask you, why do you want a podcast in the first place? What is it you're trying to accomplish with that podcast? Do you wish you had more people coming to you rather than chasing all of your prospects, trying to get them to come to your business? Do you wish that you were that known influencer and authority in your niche? Podcasts can do all of that for you. This is where we're going to help you do that. Uh, what kind of podcast are you trying to launch? What's your favorite topic? What do you love to talk about? Imagine if you could talk about that each and every day on your podcast and have people fall in love with you and build that relationship with you, that no like, and trust that we talk so much about. That building rapport is such a incre incredibly important ingredient in the sales process. Well, that's what a podcast can help you do. In this workshop, I'm going to show you exactly how to build that rapport, build that know, like, and trust with your audience so they come to you when they're ready to solve your their problems. That's what a podcast is all about. How long have you been considering launching that podcast? Yeah, you've been telling yourself, someday I'm going to do it. Someday I'm going to launch that podcast. Well, and then someday never comes. Today's going to be your someday. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. You can stop getting out and uh, searching through all of those YouTube videos. Stop getting out, trying to figure out how to do it, hunt and peck on YouTube and try to uh, solve the problems. I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step process here in this workshop to launch your podcast quickly and easily in 30 days. It's an easy process. You just need to follow the process and then you can start building those relationship with uh, with your audience and have them come to you rather than struggling so much trying to chase them. You're trying to do webinars and wonder why people aren't coming to your webinar. You're not building those relationships with your audience. And that's what I want to show you how to do today in this workshop. It's called How to Launch Your Podcast in 30 Days. I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step process to do just that. When you stay all the way until the end, I'm going to give you a free gift. I'm going to give you 75 ways to drive engagement with your podcast. Now, this uh, is designed to drive engagement with your podcast, but this resource that I give you uh, will allow you to drive engagement whatever platform you're using. If you're using uh, YouTube or social media or anything like that, this uh, 75 ways to drive engagement, I'll give you that at the end of this workshop, and you can use that to drive engagement wherever you are. I'm also going to give you an invitation to let me help you launch your podcast quickly and easily in 30 days with my podcast launch accelerator. I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process today so you can take it and run with it, but if you'd like to fast track it and uh, eliminate all of the questions and try to eliminate all of the guessing, I'll give you the opportunity to do that in Podcast Launch Accelerator, and we'll get to that in a little bit. As we go through this, I'd love to have you turn off all your distractions and pay attention here for about the next 60 minutes or so. I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. Grab a pen and paper so you have something to take notes with. I'm going to give you some nuances. I'm going to give you the step-by-step -step process. You're going to want to take some notes as we go through this entire process, and I'm going to show you how to launch your show and give you that invite to uh, come launch your show with me. So when it comes to launching your podcast, what is your biggest challenge? So many people think that that biggest challenge is the tech part. Can't figure out the tech of it. Well, the challenge isn't necessarily the tech. Launching the podcast is easy. The biggest challenge that you'll discover is what you do with the podcast after it's launched. And if you build your podcast on a solid foundation, um, it will be so much more effective for you. And I'm going to show you how to do just that. Let me give you a little example of why relationships are so powerful. I'd love to think, I'd love to have you think of a neighbor. Somebody lives down the street from you. Maybe as you pass them, you give them a little wave. You recognize them. They recognize you, uh, but they're, they're not coming over for dinner anytime soon. You just, you're, you're aware of them. Then I want you to think of the neighbor next door, the person right next door to you. You talk to them a lot. 
Um, if their garage door was open late at night, you'd shoot them a text or give them a call, kind of let them know if uh, something looked off, you'd call them or you'd check in that kind of neighbor. And then I want you to think of your best friend, like that person you would call at three in the morning if you were stuck, that person. All right. So you have the three people in mind. You got the neighbor that lives down the street. You have your next door neighbor, and then you have your best friend in mind. Now I want you to think of something that you cherish. Maybe it's your child. Maybe it's your pet, something like that. You need to leave it with somebody while you go take care of some other things. Which one of the three people that you just thought of are you going to leave it with? Well, of course you're going to leave it with your best friend. But why is that? You leave it with your best friend because you trust them. You trust that individual. Many people think that building the podcast is all about growing an audience, but building the podcast is all about building relationships. Because when you build that relationship, when your audience is ready to solve their problem, you're the one they think of. It solves so many of your marketing issues. Why can't people just notice me? Well, you know, why is that guy over there succeeding and I'm not? Well, the reason is their top of mind awareness is much higher than yours. They have positioning. They have authority and influence in your niche that you lack. But you can build that. You can build that authority and that influence in your niche with a podcast by telling your story in building those relationships because everything interesting is about people. And when you tell your stories, you let your audience get to know you. The reason you trust your best friend is because you know everything about that best friend. You've told them all of the stories that have happened to you. They've told you all the stories that have happened to them. It isn't that you've been there every step of the way. It's that they've shared it with you. Because through self-revelation, the things we reveal about ourselves, that's how friendships are built, powerful friendships. But the problem is that technology today is sucking the relationships out of society. We don't deal with people anymore. We don't have those one-on-one -on -one communications. I mean, when we order our groceries, we can go online and place our grocery order, pull up into the little designated parking stall and they bring your groceries out, load them in the back and you never have to talk to anybody. When you shop for gifts, we go on Amazon, click, click, click. The Amazon guy drops it at your front door and runs off faster and you can get to the front door and even see him. Even telemarketers today are robots. They're all tech. You can't even yell at the telemarketer for calling you because it's not even a real person on the other end of the line. Like when was the last time you actually went in the gas station to pay for gas? We just pay at the pump. We don't have to talk to anybody. And that's the problem with technology. Technology has made our lives so easy. It's made it too easy. And all of the relationships in our lives have disappeared. Well, the technology of podcasting can allow you to bring those relationships back when you build your podcast the right way. I read recently read this book. It's called They Ask You Answer. Um, it's a fantastic book by Marcus Sheridan. In the book, Marcus says that consumers are typically 70% of the way through their research before they even reach out to a business for an inquiry or to find out more information. So there's 70% of the way through the buying process. And I thought, man, that's crazy. There's 70% to the point where they're going to make a decision before they even reach out to you. So if you haven't started building a relationship with them prior to them reaching out to you, you are way behind the eight ball. I started doing a little research on this and I found research online that said in business to business transactions, most consumers are 57 to 70% through their research process before they even reach out to the company for information. So if you're not building relationships with your prospects, you're completely missing the boat. But a podcast allows you the incredible opportunity to build relationships with the people who could do business with you 
So when they're doing their research, you're right along with them, helping them, answering their questions, guiding them along the way. And now when they're ready to make that buying decision, you are the one they think of because you have a relationship with them. If you're struggling to make sales, if you're struggling to find clients, it's about building rapport. So often we rush to making the offer before we build the relationship with people and we let them know about who we are. And that's what I want to give you today. Not only am I going to show you how to launch your podcast and give you the steps step by step to do that, I'm going to show you how to build that foundation so you can build those relationships. The pod, a podcast is the best way to build the relationships because you're allowed to tell the story and allow it to come to life in the theater of the mind for your audience, unlike blogs or video or any other platform can do. It's very personal. You're in their ear, in their earbud, in that podcast. You're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them in a way that nobody else does, and you connect with them. So much so that when they meet you, they say, man, I know we've never met before, but I feel like I know you because I've been listening to you forever, and I feel like I know so much about you that you and I could, uh, could be best friends. That's the power of a podcast, and that's what I want to show you today. I want to show you how you can – do just that with your podcast. Build those powerful, profitable relationships. If you're new to Podcast Talent Coach, I spent the last 35 years in radio. This little Quonset hut right here, this four-room hut, was my uh, very first radio gig. I grew up in this little house here in suburban middle America. My brother and I uh, were raised by my single mom in this little house here. I always uh, wanted to be uh, an entrepreneur because my mom was always hustling. She waited tables at night and she was baking wedding cakes on our kitchen table uh, during the day. And we helped her deliver them on Saturdays. And it was fantastic. Um, and as I grew up, I wanted to own my own architecture firm. When I was 12, I started drafting. I drafted all the way through high school, got my first drafting job, went here to the University of Nebraska and uh, joined the College of Architecture and got my architecture degree and it was awesome and I was ready to be an architect until I realized I didn't wanna be an architect. I was about three and a half years through my architecture degree when I realized my career ladder was leaning against the wrong wall. And just by happenstance, I ended up getting a job at this little radio station because my brother worked there and his boss called one day and was looking for help. And uh, my brother wasn't home and he said, hey, do you want a job? I said, yeah, I'm a broke college kid. I could use some extra money. So I took this job at the radio station and started falling in love with radio as I was falling out of love with architecture. But I was so close to the end of my architecture degree. I just stuck it out, finished my architecture degree. By the time I got the degree, I already had a full-time job in radio and I was off and running. And now I've gone on to interview greats like George Strait. Back in college, I interviewed Ice-T. I've interviewed Zach Brown. Uh, I was the only country station to interview Lady Gaga. It was fantastic. But more importantly, I've been able to attract an audience. And I've been able to take that audience and leverage that attention for bigger and better things. And that 35 years of radio experience is something that no other podcast guru is going to bring you. Being able to not only build an audience like this, but activate the audience and get the audience to take action is something that I've been doing for decades and I can show you how to do it too. I've learned the traits of effective marketing campaigns and how to build influence, how to build authority through relationships. So many podcast gurus miss it. They teach you the tech, what kind of mic to buy, what kind of audio software to use, how to upload it to your audio host. Sure, I can teach you all of that. But what I teach you that nobody else teaches you is how to not only build an audience, but activate the audience. We were able to raise hundreds of thousands of bottles of water uh, for the open door mission so they could help people living out on the streets in the heat of summer. We were able to leverage our relationships with artists and have them come in and do concerts for us, free concerts to raise money for charity. We once teamed up with uh, country artist Old Dominion here to raise money for Food Bank for the Heartland. And if you look at that, check closely. 
That checks over a million dollars that we raised for the food bank. Musicians will come in and perform for us because we've built those relationships with them and we've built the relationships with the audience enough where they would give that kind of money. I've also been able to help great companies too. Companies like Wendy's and Twizzlers and others pay me to endorse their products on the radio because they know I have a relationship with the audience and they know I can activate that audience and get them to take action. A lot of organizations have reached out to me to have me on their stage. I've been on stage at Podcast Movement and New Media Expo. Uh, I was the dean of podcasting in the 48 Days Eagles community. These people are coming to me and inviting me to be on their stage because I have a relationship with my audience and my audience will take action. You know, I realize my kids don't have best friends. They sit on their Xbox and they talk to their friends in their headset or they Snapchat with them because technology is sucking the relationships out of society. And I have come to the point where I've discovered the power of creating those relationships with our audience through podcasting. And that's what I want to help entrepreneurs like you do today. You know, I was I launched my business and I saw so many experts doing it. I, I bought all the expert stuff. Like if you name experts, I probably bought their stuff. I was, I was buying uh, Brendan Burchard's expert Academy and a uh, uh, Russell Brunson's click funnels and one funnel away challenge and all of that. And Jeff Walker's product launch formula. I was throwing all sorts of money out at all these products because I saw all these experts doing it. I thought, well, they can do it. I can do it. And it just turned into a lot of good money going out and not a whole lot coming in for it. And it became uh, quite painful as, it, and I was like, why can they do it? And I'm not doing it. You know, they say, well, just send an email and, uh, and you can get your audience to send you a ton of money. And so I would send the email and nothing would come back. Well, what they don't tell you is that in order to send the email, you need an audience to send the email to. And not only do you need the audience, but you need a relationship with that audience. So that audience will take action when you send the email. That's what the uh, relationship with your podcast audience is all about. One of my uh, uh, gurus, one of my experts, one of my mentors uh, taught me the sales process. And he said, there's four steps in the sales process. The first step is to build rapport with your audience, build that relationship. The second step is to qualify your prospect, which means they need to be right for your product and your product needs to be right for them. If you've ever had a client you wish you could fire, you know what I'm talking about. So you need to make sure that you're right for them. They need to make sure they're right for you. We qualify each other. Once we know we're right for each other, then we educate our prospect on our solution. You have a problem. I understand your problem. Here's the solution to solve it. So we educate them on that solution. And then finally, we close the sale. Those are the four steps of the sales process. Unfortunately, too many rush to the educate part. They don't build rapport and they don't qualify their prospect. They just say, hey, I have a course, you wanna buy it? I have coaching, you wanna buy it? And we haven't done any of the qualifying or any of the rapport building. And unfortunately, a lot of people see these four steps as being equal, 25% each. And that's not the case. The sales process is about 40% building rapport. You hear everybody talk about no like, and trust. We need to build some rapport before we can make that sale, especially if you're selling high ticket items. After you build that rapport, the next 30% is qualifying your prospect. You make sure they're right for you. They make sure you're right for them. That's 70% of the way through the buying process. Now they reach out to learn more about your product. Now, wait a minute. Just a little bit ago in that book, They Ask You Answer, it said people are 70% of the way through their research before they ever reach out to the company to learn more about the product. 70% is building rapport and qualifying your prospect. And you can do just that with your podcast. You build a rapport, you share your story, you let people get to know who you are, and you build that rapport with them. And then you give examples of the people you help, how you help them, what you help them do, and why you help them do it. People 
Simon Sinek said, people don't buy what you sell. They buy it. They buy why you sell it. They don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. And when you can build that rapport and qualify them by sharing why you do what you do, they know you're right for them. That's when they reach out for more information. You're 70% of the way through the sales process. That's what your podcast can do for you. One of my favorite books is this book, The Ultimate Sales Machine by Chet Holmes. In that book, Chet says that only 3% of your market is buying today. 3% have a problem actively seeking a solution. That means the other 97% aren't thinking about buying your product today. So if all you're doing is selling to the people buying today, you're missing 97% of your audience. Here's how it breaks down. 3% are buying now. 7% could be convinced to buy now, which means, oh, you know what? I, I wasn't thinking about buying a widget, but now that you mention it, I think I do need one. Yeah, I'll take one of those widgets. I, did, I wasn't thinking of it. So that's 10%. 30%. They may need what you have. They just don't need it now. Let's say you sell uh, automobiles, right? I might need an automobile, but I don't need one today. My car is perfectly fine. I don't need another car for another year or 18 months. So a year or 18 months down the road, I'm going to need what you have, but I don't need it today. 30% think they don't need what you have based on the information they have. Let's say you sell mattresses. Well, my mattress is fine. And you say, how long have you had your mattress? Well, I've had about 15 years. Well, do you realize mattresses wear out between seven and 10 years? And if you're waking up with a sore back, it's probably because your mattress is bad and you didn't even know it. Really, I didn't know that. I need more information. I learn more information. I realize my mattress is bad. Now I'm in the market for one. Based on the information I had, I was not in your market. Now I have more information. I'm ready to buy. The final 30%, they're never going to be interested unless something changes in their life. Let's say you sell uh, Fords and their spouse works for Honda. Well, they're not buying your Ford because <laughs> they're going to be driving a Honda. Now, let's say their spouse changes jobs and all of a sudden their spouse now works for IBM. Guess who's in the market for a Ford? All right. So now... Instead of marketing to just the 3%, instead of building a relationship on your podcast with just the 3%, you're now able to build a relationship with all 100%. You're able to talk to those people who weren't thinking about it and mention it and get them off the, on, off the fence and activate them to take action. You're able to talk to those people who don't need it now and build a relationship with them so that a year from now or 18 months from now, when they need that car, they have a relationship with you and they go, I need a car. Oh, yeah. They sell a car because you're top of mind. They think of you and they come to you. You can educate those who need more information to understand they should be in your market. And you can build a relationship with those not in your market so that if they ever become somebody in your market, you have a relationship with them and you can make it happen. This pyramid right here is so powerful. Can you understand how just ha communicating and building a relationship with all five of these groups can be so much more powerful in your business than just selling to the people buying today? Can you, can you understand how a podcast makes this possible? Not just the 3%, but all 100%. Does that make sense? It's so it's so powerful. The podcast allows you to attract your ideal client, not just the ones buying today, but all of them. And rather than having to chase down your clients, you are attracting them to you through the stories that you tell and the relationships that you build. It's not a big sales pitch every episode. It's relationship building and then inviting them to have a further conversation with you when they're ready. This is Ann Sullivan. Ann came through my program to launch her podcast. She teaches harp. She's a fantastic harp player. She plays with the symphony. And uh, she was teaching people harp one-on-one -on -one in the Pittsburgh area. Then COVID hit. And as you know, when COVID hit, you can't teach harp in person any longer. So she went online. 
but she needed a way to market her services and grow her business online. And she'd always wanted to launch a podcast. She just never took the leap. She needed that accountability to get off the fence and actually do it. She'd been talking about doing it for a long time. So she came to uh, Podcast Launch Accelerator. We launched her podcast in 30 days following the steps I'm going to share with you today. Now, not only does Har uh, Ann teach HARP around the world, she also has other teachers working for her doing the same thing. This is Tavana Denise. Tavana is similar. She was a nurse and absolutely hated nursing. It was sucking the life out of her. So she got out of nursing and became an entrepreneur. And not only, not as soon as she got out of there, not more than just days later, people started reaching out to her saying, how did you do it? Uh, can you show me how to do it? Can you help me get out of nursing and do the same thing? So she started coaching others to do the same thing. Um, she started having these roundtable conversations where she would invite these women to the roundtable to have conversations of where they wanted to go. And then she would invite them into her coaching program and into her mastermind to launch their next big thing. She needed a way to spread her message and get more people to those roundtables. And she knew a podcast was the perfect way to do it. She came to me. We launched her podcast in 30 days, Tavana just took action and she started with her podcast. She launched her next round table and she said she truly believes that it was such a success because she was able to market it with her podcast. That's the power of building relationships. Greg was able to grow his podcast through relationships. Greg does the cool grandpa podcast. He teaches grandpas how to connect with their grandkids. And he had about 300 or 400 downloads a month. But by building his podcast on the right foundation, we were able to help him take the next step. And he went from 400 to 854 in a month. The following month, he already had 718 halfway through the month. And then we ended up getting Greg landed uh, an interview in the New York Times and had a month worth of downloads in a weekend. That also led to him being featured in the Atlanta Journal Constitutional. And uh, it was it was off to the races from there. And Greg continues to grow and continues to help grandpas with his podcast. Rocky Lavani was the same sort of thing. Rocky does the podcast uh, Profit Answer Man. He is uh, certified in Profit First with Mike Michalowicz. And when he came through my program, he doubled his downloads because we focused on the listener. Rocky said, while most people focus on the equipment, Eric focuses on the listener and how you can serve them. And that, my friend, you're not getting from other podcast gurus. I'm teaching you how to build your podcast on the right foundation. Now, if you're a content creator, there are three ways to share your content. You can share it via audio, like a podcast. You can share it via video, like YouTube. Or you can share it via the written word, like a blog. And a lot of people say, yeah, Eric, but why a podcast and not YouTube? Like YouTube's all the rage. Well, there's a reason I love podcasting. Uh, there's a, a multiple reasons, and I will share those with you and show you why podcast is not only my preferred medium, but it is such a powerful medium when it comes to connecting with your audience. Right now, there are about 600 million blogs. This data is from 2001, but if you went back to 2018, you'd probably find the same number. This 600 million blog number hasn't changed for years. It's pretty steady. There are about 600 million. There are about 51 to 55 million YouTube channels, depending on when you check. These are channels you can actually subscribe to. So about 50 million YouTube channels. There are only about three and a half to four million podcasts right now. There are only about half of those are actively publishing new episodes. Just under two million currently publishing fresh content on a regular basis. So as you're out trying to get noticed, trying to be an authority in your niche, trying to be that influencer and get people to take notice of you, you need to ask yourself, do you want to be one of 3.5 million or do you want to try and be one of 600 million? The space is wide open and it's a great way for you to get noticed. The next reason I love podcasting is because it's portable. 
you can do uh you can consume a podcast while you're doing other things where it's pretty difficult to consume a video or read a blog you can read or you can listen to a podcast while you're running where it's not as easy to read a blog while you're on the run you while you're working out at the gym listening to a podcast while you're driving in the car you could be listening to a podcast kind of difficult to uh to safely watch a youtube video while you're driving or while you're showering. Have you read a blog in the shower lately? Probably not, but you can listen to a podcast there. You can consume the podcast while you're doing other things. And the number one reason people listen to a podcast is for companionship. They don't want to do whatever they're doing by themselves. So you're their friend along for the ride. They're out running by themselves. You're in their ear with the podcast. You're running right along with them. You're their running buddy. That's how friendships are formed. That doesn't happen with a YouTube video. The numbers are in your favor too. 39% of Americans listen to podcasts on a weekly basis. 109 million people in America listen to podcasts in the last month alone. That number is on a trajectory of 40% growth over the next few years. That's according to the Nielsen Company. They do radio and television ratings. It's a hugely popular, ever-growing platform that you need to be on. The future is bright, and it's time for you to jump in. Can you see how that can be so powerful for your business? Just imagine how your business would grow if you were able to have a weekly conversation with your audience and your prospects? How much revenue could you generate in a month if you just had regular conversations with your, with your uh, business prospects? Those people that are ideal clients for you and you're having a conversation with them on a weekly basis. All this content that you're creating, are you leveraging that content to its fullest potential? Do you have a strategy behind that content? to not only build rapport with your audience, but start leading them down that client journey to become a client with you, to become a high level client with you and to succeed, help you build your business. It all starts by building it on the right platform. I hope you have something to write with. Here are the five steps to building a podcast. All right, don't overcomplicate it. It's not about the tech. It is about relationships, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. There are five steps to building your podcast. The first is the foundation. This is what most podcast gurus miss. They're going to teach you the tech in the middle. Uh, I teach you how to build that foundation so you're targeting the right people, you understand your why, and you're really making the connection, laying the foundation to build those powerful, profitable relationships. The next is recording your podcast. You really need three pieces of equipment to record your podcast. You need a microphone, preferably a USB microphone that'll plug right into your computer. Oh, you're going to need a computer and you're going to need a pair of headphones or earbuds, something to listen to yourself with. That's it. You don't need a mixer. You don't need any other fancy equipment. You get a microphone. This microphone right here, $75 microphone. Plenty of microphone for you. You don't need to spend hundreds of dollars. It's very simple. Record your podcast. Then you need to edit the podcast. If you can edit a Word document, you can edit podcasts. It uses all the same commands, copy, paste, delete, all of that stuff. So if you can edit a Word document, you can edit audio. Then you upload it to an audio host. An audio host is like a storage unit for your podcast. All right, so when you're done, you create an MP3 of it and you upload it to your audio host, just like you would upload a, like uploading a photo to Facebook. Pretty simple. And then once you do that, then you distribute it to all of the podcast platforms like uh, Apple Podcasts or Spotify or all of the rest. You give them your address and it automatically gets ingested into all of the platforms. So let's dive into each one of these a little bit deeper. Let's start with your foundation. The foundation starts with your why. You need a solid why to uh, create your podcast because without a solid why, your podcast is going to start feeling like work. 
it's going to feel like, oh, man, I got to get in and do it again. If you're talking about something somebody else loves and not what you love and you don't have a strong why behind it, it'll be difficult for you to create an episode each and every week. So make sure that why is strong. I can help you get through that in Podcast Launch Accelerator. Make sure you have a topic that you love and you can talk about for hours on end. It's got to be something that you're passionate about, not something you think others will be passionate about. You need to identify your target listener, that ideal target listener that wants what you have. Get specific to a single individual so you can have that conversation and build that relationship with them. So identify that individual. You need to create your show name. You want your show name to be unique, but you don't want it to be too cool for the room. You also don't want it to be the Bob Smith podcast because nobody knows what that is. So name your podcast in a way that tells your audience what the podcast is all about, but don't be too clever. It's a fine line to walk. Once you have the show name, you need to create your graphics. So your graphics go in the podcast players as they're scrolling and searching for something to do or something to listen to. Your graphics should make them stop, pause, say, hey, that looks interesting. I need more information. So create your graphics in a way to pique their interest and then create your podcast style. What is your personality and how are you going to bring that out on your show? This foundation right here, few podcast gurus will teach you how to develop your why, how to develop your style, how to bring your personality out in your podcast. And those are so critical when it comes to building the relationship with your target listener. Once you have your foundation built, it's time to uh, record your podcast. You need to set aside production time. I highly recommend you record your podcast at the same time every week. People always ask me, what's the best day of the week to release your podcast? It doesn't matter. Podcasts are on demand. People listen when they're ready to listen. They may go to the gym Wednesday nights at six. That's when they're going to listen to your podcast. It doesn't matter when your podcast was released. It matters when they want to listen to it. So be consistent. Just release it at the same time every week and you're going to be fine. And in order to do that, you need to set aside production time to create your podcast at the same time each and every week. So many people give up because it's such a hard process. They don't have a process set in place. They're just throwing darts at the board, trying to figure it out, watching YouTube videos and hunting and pecking and guessing. And therefore, it eats up a lot of their week because they don't have a process well-defined. So define your, your production process so you can effectively and efficiently produce a podcast easily each and every week. Get your equipment, your mic, your computer, and your headphones. Determine how you're going to record it. Uh, if you're doing interviews, you'll probably want to record it on Zoom. Uh, if you're doing a solo show, record it straight into your audio software. Schedule your interviews and get those recorded. And then you need to build the open of your show. And close is optional, but kind of cool. It adds a little showbiz to it. The open of the show is like your theme song or the intro. That is the same thing each and every week. It tells people they're in the right place when they come to listen to your podcast. Think of it as the opening of your favorite sitcom. And you go through the entire 30-second intro. It's the same thing each and every time. That just tells you you're in the right spot. And it gives those new folks uh, an idea of what the show is all about. Then we move on to editing your show. I love to use Audacity. Audacity is free software you can download to edit your show. Uh, if you can edit a Word document, you can edit in Audacity. It's all of the same commands. Uh, cut, paste, copy, delete. Uh, you can highlight and drag it even just like you do in a Word document. You'll need to get some music and some sound effects to add a little show business. Look for royalty-free music when you're looking for music to add to your podcast. Once you have it all edited down, you'll export it to an MP3. And if you can export, uh, if you can export a Word document to a PDF, you can export uh, a um, edited file to an MP3. It's the same thing. You just click export, select MP3, and you're good to go. Save it as whatever you want to save it as. Make sure the file size is small. You want to use an MP3 and not a WAV file. WAV files are 10 times bigger than MP3s. And the number one reason people unsubscribe to a podcast is because they don't have any room on their phone. They have too many episodes. And if your episode is super big, you're the first one to go. So make sure you're using an MP3 so it's a smaller size. 
Then we move into uploading. You need a hosting account. I like Libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N. Libsyn is a podcast audio host. So is Blueberry and a few others. That's where you take your MP3 and you upload it into your storage unit. Um, it's where you store all of your podcast audio. You don't actually give your audio to Apple and Spotify and all of the rest. You put it in your storage unit and then you give all of those podcast players your address. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Um, then you post it on Facebook and you post it on your website so you can start promoting it and get people to come and listen to it. Because building and launching the podcast is only the first step. Then you need to build the audience. Once we have the podcast episode ready to roll, now we need to distribute it to all of the platforms. The big ones are Apple and uh, iHeartRadio and Spotify and a few others. Make sure you distribute to the big ones. Then you can start distributing to the smaller ones. They use your RSS feed. It stands for Real Simple Syndication. The RSS feed is kind of like the address to your storage unit. You give the RSS feed to all of the platforms one time, and then they ping your audio host every few minutes to see if there's anything new. If there's something new, it automatically gets ingested into the player so you don't have to do anything. So you'll distribute it to Apple. Apple's a little different in the way they use an RSS feed, uh, but it's just a matter of getting it and filling out their form. This whole process here, distributing it, you only have to do it one time and one time only. Once they have your RSS feed, you don't have to worry about this distribute step again unless you change uh, podcasts. And then it's just time to promote it. Get out and tell people that your, your podcast exists and get them to come to the podcast. So many people come to me and they say, Eric, uh, I love doing my podcast, but it's not growing. Nobody's coming. And I say, all right, well, what do you do when you launch an episode? And they go, well, when I launch an episode, uh, I email my list and uh, then I post it on Facebook. And I said, well, that's great. But those people already know you and love you. And if they were going to listen to your podcast, they would probably already be listening to your podcast. What are you doing to get out and get in front of new people and invite them to your podcast? That's how you're going to grow. So make sure that you promote it effectively. Those are the five steps to launch your podcast. You go through those five steps and you are out and published to the world. Unfortunately, podcasts tend to fade away. People launch it, they get all excited and uh, they, they do about seven episodes and then they just quit. And it happens so often that they've, they've defined a term in the industry called pod fading which means the podcast just fades away. And I thought this seven episode number was kind of crazy. I said, you gotta be kidding me, seven episodes. And uh, then I started working with a client. We were looking for podcasts for her to get interviewed on so she could grow her audience. And so she was in the uh, elderly care uh, niche. So her podcast was called the Caregiver Podcast. She helped middle-aged women take care of their elderly parents. So we said, okay, great. Let's look for uh, caregiving podcasts. And I tell you, we went through them. Here's one, uh, seven episodes hadn't published since 2019. Here's one had nine episodes last published in 2020. Here's one that had two episodes. Here's one that had 19 episodes and hadn't been heard from in three years. Like it was crazy how many uh, of these podcasts just faded away. And what I found out is that uh, there are three big reasons that podcasts fade away. Uh, and before I get into those three reasons, I'm going to share with you exactly what those reasons are so you can avoid those pitfalls. Uh, but before I show you those three reasons, I want to talk to you a little bit about how to launch and grow your podcast and give you an opportunity to get a little bit of uh, accountability to make it happen. Because so many people say, yeah, I'd love to, but where do I start? How do I launch? How do I grow? Um, a lot of people need that accountability and they just want to fast track it. They're tired of trying to do it all themselves and trying to figure it out. They just want somebody to take their hand and show them every step of the way. And so that's what I want to do for you. Just think about launching that podcast and what has held you back from launching that podcast for so long. So many learn this and they never take action, but I've given you a step-by-step -step process 
the one thing that happens is a lot of people get the information and do nothing with it because information doesn't create transformation. It's the implementation that does. And that's why I've created Podcast Launch Accelerator. It is an implementation program. This is where I take your hand and walk you every step of the way, step by step, to launch your podcast. We talk about your purpose and your why and that foundation. We talk about your program and the topic that you talk about. We talk about the platform and if you're doing a solo show or an interview style show and what's the structure of the show. We talk about producing it, recording it, editing it. We talk about how to publish it and put it up on your host. But more importantly, we talk about promoting it so you can build that audience and build those relationships. By the end of the program, you will have your podcast published to the world. You'll lay the foundation to be known as that influencer in your niche. You're going to begin building those powerful, profitable relationships like we talked about. And more importantly, I'm going to show you the process so you can do it efficiently and you can free up your time, more time to work in your business. So in Podcast Launch Accelerator, it's a live program. This isn't some recorded course you go through and watch a bunch of videos. You get four live group training sessions. This is a value of $1,497. This is where I sit down with you in a group setting and I walk you through all five steps of launching your podcast. Step by step, I show you exactly how to do it, what to do. You are able to ask your questions and get them answered. Make sure that you're accountable. You get the homework done. So next week we take the next step. And by the end of the fourth week, your podcast is out to the world. They're live group sessions with me personally walking you through it. We record all of the sessions and you get lifetime access to the recordings, both audio and video. So you can go back and revisit those recordings anytime you'd like. Maybe you want to launch a second podcast. Maybe you want to brush up on this podcast and make sure the foundation is solid. You get lifetime access to those recordings. That's another value of $1,497. Over my 35 years of radio, I have uh, created uh, so much knowledge, gained so much knowledge and turned that into uh, online resources like worksheets and fill in the blank templates and all of this stuff, like everything from show clock to show prep to uh, how to interview my best interview questions. There are dozens and dozens of these tools and I put them all in an online toolkit library for you to have access to whenever you need them. I walk you through those templates when you need them during podcast launch accelerator. I don't just send you into the vault. I personally show you which tool to use at the right time and why to do that. So that's a $497 value there. You get access to the private podcast launch accelerator group. This is a Facebook group. So if you're getting your podcast produced in the middle of the week between our calls and you have a question, you can jump in the po private podcast launch accelerator group and ask your question there. Get your question answered by me and other people who have gone through the program in the past and who are going through it with you currently. You can get your questions answered between our calls. That's a $497 value. As we go through this and you get stuck, I will give you a one-on-one -on -one call with me to make sure we get you unstuck and make sure you're continuing on the road to success. That's a $250 value uh, for that one-on-one -on -one call with me. I give you lifetime access to all future calls, versions, and updates. If you ever want to come through the program again in the future, you're more than welcome to come back and do it all again. You want to launch a second podcast in the future? You want to walk through this whole process again? Every time I teach it, you are w welcome to come through as an alumnus of the program. That's a $1,497 value, takes the total value up to $5,735. Enrollment is not going to cost you $5,735. Uh, enrollment in Podcast Launch Accelerator is $997. I have a few bonuses that come along with that enrollment payment as well. 
Bonus number one, you get in your podcast, you're creating great interviews, but you're not an interviewer. That's why I'm giving you creating powerful and unique podcast interviews course. If you want to do interviews on your podcast, this course will show you exactly how I interview people like Blake Shelton and Lady Gaga and all of the other celebrities that I've interviewed. This course will show you how to do that. It sells on my website for $197. You get it as a bonus with Podcast Launch Accelerator. You once get your podcast launched, now you need to grow the audience. How do you do that? I give you a ticket to Audience Explosion Blueprint. This is my three-day event where I build, help you build your blueprint to grow your audience systematically and methodically so you can build that audience and build those relationships. Those tickets are $197. You get a free ticket to come join me at Audience Explosion Blueprint. And I have one more bonus for you. Let's say you get through the whole program and now you're not sure what your next step should be. I'm giving you an additional one-on-one -on -one call with me. It's a $250 value. You get that as bonus number three in Podcast Launch Accelerator. That takes the entire value up to $6,379. Enrollment, like I said, is $997. That's typically what I sell it for on the website. But because you're here today and I'm launching this in the middle of summer, I'm going to give you a special deal today. You can get into Podcast Launch Accelerator today for just $497. For $497, you can have your podcast launched in 30 days or less. Just imagine if all this program did was saved you hours of time guessing and watching YouTube videos and trying to figure out how to launch your podcast. If it just saved you that time, would it be worth $497? It, let's say you were able to build that foundation to attract your audience, and all it did was generate a steady stream of clients for you, would it be worth that $997? If all it did was built your authority in your niche and turned you into an influencer and allowed you to have the impact that you so desire, would it be worth that $6,379? It's only $497 today. Enroll at podcasttalentcoach.com slash PLA. That's short for Podcast Launch Accelerator. And of course, I'm going to give you a guarantee because I want to see you launch. I'm going to give you the guaranteed to launch guarantee. If you go through all 30 days and you do the work and you haven't launched, I will personally work with you and help you overcome your struggles until you launch. I will make sure you get launched. You can, you can enroll right now at podcasttalentcoach.com slash PLA, $497. You need to do it soon because the classes begin Monday, June 24th. We start teaching the course live on the 24th. In week one, we go through your purpose and your program. Define your why. We allocate your production time. We define your personality and your podcast style. Define your topic and define your ideal target listener. We build that foundation. In week two, we talk about your platform and how you produce the show. So your platform is the style of your show, a solo show, an interview style show. We name your show. We create your graphics. We get your hosting account. We get your equipment. We define your process so you don't fade away, and we record the show. In week three, it's all about editing the show. We produce it. We edit it. We finalize it. We export it. It's all right there. We're ready to go. We've produced the show in week three. And then in week four, we launch. We put the final touches on the edits. We add your open and close. We post the show up to your host, and we post it to your website. We're off and running. Now we just need to build the audience, and that's what you get in the Audience Explosion Blueprint bonus. We promote your show. We show you how to profit from it and show you how to build those powerful relationships. That is all in the Audience Explosion Blueprint event. So the total value is $6,379. Of course, it's not going to cost you anywhere near that. That enrollment of $497 will get you where you want to go. It will get your podcast launched. Again, the classes start Monday the 24th, and you can enroll 
at podcasttalentcoach.com slash PLA, short for Podcast Launch Accelerator. Let's talk a little bit about pod fading and how we can prevent you from fading away. So that pod fades at seven episodes on average. And there are three big reasons that people fade away. First is it the podcast production is more work than they thought it would be. Well, it's more work because they don't have a step-by-step -step process like I just taught you. They're out just throwing stuff at the wall to see what sticks and trying to figure it out. They don't have a step-by-step -step process that I want to give you in Podcast Launch Accelerator. We build your foundation, your purpose, your program, your platform, those three important P's for you, and then show you how to promote it. We build that foundation. It takes too much time because they don't have a system in place. I'm giving you that system. I'm showing you how to build that system in Podcast Launch Accelerator so you don't fade away. The second reason podcasts fade away is the podcast doesn't grow as fast as they thought it would because they have no promotion strategy. I told you a minute ago, well, I send an email to my list and I post it on Facebook and it doesn't grow. Right, because your system and your strategy is wrong. They need a promotion strategy, and that's what I teach you in the uh, Audience Explosion Blueprint event, how to build that. So we talked about the three Ps, right? Your purpose, your program, and your platform. Promotion is the bonus P, and it's exactly what you get in the Audience Explosion Blueprint. We get that strategy, so you don't pod fade. The final reason podcasts fade away is that it doesn't generate revenue as fast as they thought it would because they have no system in place to use the podcast as a marketing tool for their business. You build that audience. You build a relationship with that audience. You get them on your email list to continue to nurture that relationship. You send them an offer to have a further conversation with you. And then you turn them into a client, but it's all part of a system. And if you want your podcast to help you generate revenue, you need to build relationships and build it into a system with your podcast. You can build relationships with uh, your clients. Uh, you can build relationships with prospects. You can build relationships with partners and you can build relationships with peers. And you can do that by demonstrating your authority on your podcast. You can demonstrate your coaching. You can demonstrate your products. And you can demonstrate your uh, authority by answering questions on your show. You can use your podcast as a stage to interview JV partners who will promote you. If you always wished you could have a cup of coffee with a mentor, um, but they don't have time for it, you can invite them to be a guest on your podcast, have an hour-long conversation with them right there. They will love it, and you will benefit from it. Jamie Masters created a podcast called The Eventual Millionaire because she wanted to have conversations with millionaires. And so her podcast, all she did was invite pod millionaires to be on her podcast called The Eventual Millionaire to talk about how they became a millionaire. So every week she has a conversation with a millionaire. How fantastic is that? Not only does she have a conversation with them, she's building relationships with them. That's what a podcast can do for you. And today is the day that you start to launch. You have uh, understood the, the power of relationships. We've talked so much about that. How you can't just speak to the 3%. You have to speak to all 100% and build relationships so that when they're ready to buy, they think of you. And you've been telling yourself for a long time now, someday I'm going to launch. Well, today's your someday. We've talked about your why. Why do you want to do it? What, what's that impact you want to leave on the world? I've given you the five steps right there. You have those in your hand. Now you just need the accountability so all of the notes that you've taken through this workshop, don't just go in the top drawer for someday to launch that show. Make today your day. Get my personal guidance to help you launch your podcast. Just go to podcasttalentcoach.com slash PLA. It's short for Podcast Launch Accelerator. 
and I'd love to see you inside the program. When you go over to that page, you will find your free gift link at the bottom of that page. I'll show you exactly what that looks like so you know exactly where to find it. When you go to podcasttalentcoach.com slash PLA, you will get to this page right here. Launch your podcast in 30 days. This gives you the entire overview of the uh, program like we just talked about. Down here is a big blue button. You can click here and get instant access to the course now. Remember, we start June 24th, so get enrolled right here. Um, and right here is your free gift, 75 ways to drive engagement with your podcast. Click right there to download it and you will be in. You don't even have to enter your name and email address. You just click that and it'll take you right there to it. All right. Now, uh, questions. I often get questions. If you have a question post it up in the chat there, a lot of times I get questions. How long will it take me to produce a podcast every week? Well, it depends on how long the podcast is. You can usually um, allocate about three times the length of the podcast in order to produce it. So that's from organization, outlining it all the way to hitting publish on your website. If it's a 30 minute podcast, you could probably do it in 90. If it's a 15 minute podcast, you could do it in under an hour. So all of that work, it just, uh, it depends on how long the show is. And then people ask me, how long should my podcast be? There's no such thing as too long, only too boring. So it only needs to be as long as it needs to be and no longer than that. I've listened to podcasts that were an hour long and thought, man, I wish it was longer. And I've listened to a podcast that was 15 minutes long and thought, man, when is this going to end? So there's no such thing as too long, just too boring. Make sure your podcast has that forward momentum. A lot of podcast gurus aren't going to teach you that. I'll show you how to do that inside Podcast Launch Accelerator. All right. Other questions in the chat. Uh, best mic to get. Great question. So this mic here is an Audio Technica. Uh, I'm not going to give you the full specs because they don't make this mic anymore. There's one very similar to this. It's called the Samson Q2U. That's S-A-M-S-O-N-Q2U. Just the letter Q, the number two, the letter U. Samson Q2U podcast uh, mic is about $75. You can get the mic, the holder, this boom arm that just clamps to your desk for about $99 on Amazon. Just look for the um, Samson Q2U podcast kit and you'll find it right there. All right. Um, Audacity is the uh, audio software that I prefer. Uh, it's free and easy to use. If you like using GarageBand on your mic, by all means, go use GarageBand. You don't need to spend a ton of money on audio software. Um, can we use free audio hosts? You can. Um, there are some free audio hosts out there. I don't recommend the free audio hosts because uh, I find that they have a very difficult time making money when they give away their stuff for free. And the uh, they usually try to make money by putting ads into your show that you don't have any control over. And so the ads that are in your show might not uh, might not fit well with your show. They might not fit well with your beliefs. And so uh, and and if they go under, so does your show and all of your episodes are gone. So I like to use Libsyn. You can get a Libsyn account for as little as $7 a month. Uh, it's not that expensive. And uh, if you buy it on an annual basis, it's even cheaper than that. If you're going to get a Libsyn account, use the podcast talent coach affiliate link or affiliate code PTC for a short for podcast talent coach. When you get your Libsyn account, if you use that um, coupon code PTC, you can get your first month for free. Um, that's at libsyn.com, L-I-B-S-Y-N.com. All right. Uh, appreciate you being here. Thanks for giving me your time. I'd love to see you in the program. Again, it's podcasttalentcoach.com slash P-L-A, short for Podcast Launch Accelerator. And uh, the classes begin here coming up on the 24th. I can't wait to see you over there. All right. Get registered. I'll see you inside the uh, program. And thanks again for being here. We'll talk to you again real soon.